Hey mathematicians, today our lesson is over interpreting remainders. Our tech is 4.4H to solve with fluency one and two step problems involving division, including interpreting remainders. Let's go ahead and read our learning goal together. Today I'm learning how to interpret remainders so I can estimate and solve real world problems. I'll know I have it when I can identify the information I am given in a word problem. I can draw an accurate strip diagram and write an equation with a variable. I can determine the appropriate steps to solve a word problem, and I can solve and respond to the question being asked in a word problem. Let's look at our real world connection. Why do we need to know how to interpret remainders? While division isn't always neat and pretty, we oftentimes end up with a remainder of something. If you have 30 cupcakes, but only 25 people showed up to your party, what do you do with the remaining five cupcakes? Knowing how to interpret your remainder will help you best decide what to do with them. Let's quickly go over our vocabulary for this lesson today. A dividend is the number that is being divided. Divisor is the number the dividend is being divided by. Quotient is the answer to a division problem or the size or number of each group. Remainder is the amount left over when a number cannot be divided equally. An expression is a mathematical phrase without an equal sign. And an equation is a number sentence that shows two quantities are equal. So let's go ahead and begin with our lesson today. So I want to start with a sharing cookies math task. So let's say there are six groups of students and 45 cookies. I want you to decide how the cookies should be shared among the groups. Record your thinking using words, numbers, equations, models, pictures, and be ready to share. So go ahead and pause your video now and then play when you're ready to move on. So we could use an array to represent our cookies. This array, this array represents 45 cookies divided by five groups and it equals nine cookies per group. But we want to break the cookies into groups of six, not five. So let's make six groups. Now there are six groups of cookies, but we have three left over. Who gets the three cookies? How can we make this fair? We can split the last three cookies in half. So each group will get seven and one half or seven and half cookies. We can model this problem using the equation 45 cookies divided by six groups equals seven and a half cookies per group. So when you're solving a division word problem, you may need to interpret the remainder. This means that you will have to decide how the remainder relates to the answer and what you should do with it. When you interpret a remainder, you have three choices, round it, drop it, or share it. When rounding the remainder means that you round it up and you include it in the answer. So in other words, you are adding one more to your quotient so that everyone or everything will be included. For example, 23 students are going on a field trip, four students can be with one chaperone, how many chaperones will be needed? So if I have 23 students and I break them into five spots, I divide them four spots per chaperone, I have five chaperones and three extra students. So what do I do with those three students? Do they not get to go? Do they go without a chaperone? No, we'll have to add one more chaperone so that everyone is included. So five chaperones will be needed for the field trip. Dropping the remainder or ignoring the remainder means that you are not using it in the answer at all. So for example, 23 students want to share a snack. They have 50 crackers. How many crackers does each student get? So 50 crackers divided by 23 students equals two crackers per student with four crackers left over. Since four crackers cannot be easily be divided among 23 students, the four extra crackers are dropped or ignored. They are not part of the answer. A tip, use drop it when you, cannot e when you cannot easily divide the remainder and when rounding up doesn't make sense. Last, sharing the remainder. Sharing the remainder means that you are including the remainder in the answer and reporting it as a fraction or a decimal. So Angie needs two pieces of string to make a friendship bracelet. She has one piece that is 19 inches long. How long will each piece be if she cuts the string into two equal pieces? 
So if we divide 19 by two, we get nine inches per piece with one inch remaining. So if I have 19 inches and I divide that into two, I have one inch remaining. Since one inch of string can easily be shared between two pieces, because I can cut an inch into two half inches, right? It can be split in half and add to the answer as a decimal or fraction. So nine and a half inches of rope, of string. So a tip when sharing it, sharing is often used with money, food, and measurement. You share it when you can easily and equally split the remainder and it makes sense to do so. Let's go ahead and look at some problems together and see if we can interpret our remainders. The entire class is going on a trip to the zoo. There are 65 students and nine teachers. If each van holds eight people, how many vans will we need to take? So I have 65 students and nine teachers going on the trip. So I need to find first my total number of people going on the trip. Five plus nine is 14. I'll carry that one. One plus six is seven. So I have a total of 74 people going on this trip. And now I need to break those 74 people up into groups of eight, because one van can only hold eight people. So I'm going to divide 74 by eight. I'm gonna list my multiples of eight, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, and 72. Sorry, that's a little messy. So eight cannot divide into seven. So eight times zero is zero. Seven minus zero is seven. We'll go ahead and bring down the four. Let's see how many times eight can divide into 74. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Nine times eight is 72. 74 minus 72 is going to leave me with two. So I have a remainder of two. This means that I need nine vans and then I have two people who are left. So what do I do with those two people? Do they not get to go? Do we put them on top of the van? We have to decide what we need to do. Since we can't leave them behind, it looks like we're gonna have to round our remainder. We're going to have to add one more to our quotient. So instead of taking nine vans, we're going to need to take 10 vans even though that 10th van will only have two people in it instead of eight. All right, our next problem says, Michaela has 895 video game points. She wants to share them with her five friends so that each of them will have the same amount of points. How many video game points will each girl get? So I have to take this 895 and I'm dividing it by six, right? So it's Michaela and her five friends. So Michaela plus her five friends is going to be six. So I'm gonna do my multiples of six. So six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. So now that I have my multiples of six, we're gonna go ahead and start dividing. So six divides into eight one time, then I'm gonna multiply, one times six is six, then I'm going to subtract, eight minus six is two, is two smaller than six? Yes, we can bring down the next digit, which is nine, our new dividend is 29. So how many times can six divide into 29? One, two, three, four times, if I go five times, that's over 29, it's too big, so I can only divide in four times. Six times four is 24. 29 minus 24 is five. 
Is five smaller than six? Yes. So then I can bring down my next five. So six divides into 55. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Nine times six is 54. 55 minus 54 is one. So I have a remainder of one. So this means that every girl will get 149 points. And then I have one left over. So is it fair if I give this one point, if Michaela wants all of them to have the same amount of points, is it fair that I give this one point to one person? Because that means one person will have more. It's not fair, so with our remainder this time, we're going to drop it. We are not going to include it in our answer at all. So every girl will get 149 points, and then the remaining points will be ignored. All right, last question. Layla is making hair bows for her three sisters. She buys 314 inches of ribbon to make bows. How much ribbon will she be able to use for each bow? So I'm going to take 314 and I'm going to divide by three sisters and Layla. So Layla and three sisters, that's going to be four bows Layla is going to be making. So we're going to do our multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. All right, so four can divide into three, zero times. Four times zero is zero. Three minus zero is three. Go ahead and bring down the one because three is smaller than four. Now we're dividing into 31. Four divides into 31. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Seven times four is 28. 31 minus 28 is 3. 3 is smaller than 4, so we'll go ahead and bring down the next 4. And now we're dividing into 34. So let's see how many times 4 can divide into 34. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. 8 times 4 is 32. So we have a remainder of 2. So this means that I can use, I'm sorry, Layla can use 78 inches per bow. So per bow. But what are we gonna do with this last two inches? So let's draw a picture to see what this is gonna look like. So I have, let's see, one and one inches, right? One, two inches. Is it possible for me to divide those two inches into four additional parts? Yeah, so if I split this inch in half and this inch in half, I now have one, two, three, four halves of an inch. So really, Layla is going to be able to use 78 and one half inch per bow. So she's gonna be able to use all of that ribbon to make bows.